The white soul is 100 years of generation. To generation. To generation. To generation. 100 years of family, of growth. Of growth, of excitement, of tyra, of tefillah. The white soul is 100 years of community. It is 100 years as the center of our lives. Being at the forefront of the community. The, the white shul is 100, 100 years of Torah and, and growth. growth. The white shul is 100 years of dedication to Kalyas. The White Shul is really like no other. It's a place where we all come to learn, come to daven, and we really just come to grow. It's great energy here, it's great vibes. The davening is amazing, the Kadeshim are also amazing. The White Shul is the focal point of the entire community. It's everything. Always was like that, will always be like that. It's a true credit to the Shul that it's managed to transform itself, to continuously be fresh and unique and modern. We moved to Lawrence to be near the White Shul. This was the place to be. It was the place to be for me, whether it was Shabbos or Yantif, and it's where my Mokom was. You came to the White Shul Shabbos morning, the place was packed, and everyone knew who the regular candy men were. There was the great Ring Olivio games going on in the courtyard. All the parents and grandparents and sisters and brothers who lived everywhere else came to experience the wonderful, wonderful davening of the White Shul. And we loved every part of the Shul, and we did our utmost to make this the centerpiece of our lives. Besides Eretz Yisrael, this is my happy place. Anyone who is coming to look to find their Rebbein Shalom, they will be able to find their Rebbein Shalom in our shul. The broad array of shiurim on all different levels, on all different topics, different times of the day, appeal and attract everyone on their own level and their own schedule. It's very growth-centric. It's an incubator for inspiration. Congregation Knesset Israel was known for its all-star youth program, but especially its junior congregation. Youth directors in the 60s, such as Dove Gittler, the late Chaim Schlossel. They learn to love shuls, and they learn to love the White Shul in particular. There's always something going on at the White Shul. A balloon party, a perm party, a gadol's visiting. There's programming for kids, there's programming for women, there's events at people's homes, a barbecue with a Rebbe, a kumzitz with the Rebbeim. We have the Rosh Chodesh here every month with the Rebbetzin. We had the schos to have Rabbi Shlomo Amar here for Shabbos. We had a Hasidic Shalag Ba'omer Hadlaka two days before. We had a Yom Ha'atzma'ut celebration. And that's what the White Shul is about. This is the place Mashiach is coming to. As the community shul, it has by far the broadest demographic of any shul in the neighborhood. You have people from every walk of life here. You have people who come to shul dressed in Becca shoes. You have people who come to shul dressed with kippahs through gold, and everybody feels part of the shul. I want to belong to a shul that wants me to belong to it, that accepts me, that loves me, that embraces us with warmth, with caring, with wisdom, with Judaism. They really care about your growth, and they do whatever they can to help you grow. I've lived through several generations, and I must tell you that I have never experienced the chesed and the kindness of people as I have in this community. The years that I was president of the shul was when we were welcomed with a, a new member of our community called Sandy. And the white shul became the center of the community. We serviced God knows how many people meals. FEMA set up their stations. We welcomed in the Hebrew Academy of Long Beach, and we really strove to the top of what we needed to be in that very, very difficult time. was a quiet type person. He became friendly with the children, the ones that he could try to pull together to Yiddishkeit because there isn't that wasn't that much available then. We liked what his his classes, with the way he was able to give them. My husband was a legendary person. He was a brilliant man, a charming man. A man of Torah, but a man of the world. 
And because he had all these attributes, he attracted so many different people. How could you not attend? How could you not want to be Mishtatev? How could you not want to hear one of the best speakers, a world-renowned orator? His drushes Shabbos morning, they were works of art. The way that he artfully and dramatically took his glasses off, put his glasses back on. Always something new, always something right on the mark. The excitement that I had from the very young age of waiting to hear the Rabbi Strasha, because that's what is really the hallmark of Shabbos. That's what we're going to talk about. Rabbi was there for all of our joyous occasions, as well as the challenging times. He was there to give us Musa when it was needed, and we were Makaba, and Rabbi Kalkowitz brought the Kuska Rebbe into our lives. We had this core group of people, in addition to Rabbanim and other very learned people, who learned how to learn through him, and it was an amazing thing to watch. We have two Rabbanim that can easily have their own shuls. Both Rabbi Feiner and Rabbi Neuberger each have their own individual approach, and they create a desire to excel. Rabbi Feiner is the most critical and important rabbi that we have in the Shtat. Rabbi Feiner and Rabbi Neuberger, they have no problem getting involved in areas people don't want to touch because they care about their fellow Jew. We love Rabbi Feiner. We love his message every week. It changes us, it inspires us, it makes us better people. Just watching him, watching the way he davens, watching the way he speaks to people, that by itself inspires you. Rabbi Feiner grew up in the community and had this tremendous love and ava for Rabbi Palkovitz. Rabbi Feiner, you are a true Talmud of his, and you have all those attributes, but you know what? You have one more attribute. You're nice and young, and you're energetic and your smile is the heartbreaker. Anything that I've accomplished and anything that I continue to accomplish, it's always with my other half, my better half, the best Rebetzin in the world by my side. Rebetzin Aviva Feiner, my Akarsa Tov is endless. My kids have a relationship with Rabbanim. The Rabbanim have a relationship with my children. My wife has a relationship with the Rebetzins. They're always there for us. Just this past week, 10 minutes before Shabbos, Rabbi Neuberger and I were discussing a matter. That type of love and attention, I don't know where else you could find that. He's mamish. Oh. So geschmack, so labedix, such a tamachacham, such a balmidas tovas. It's a schus to work in tandem with Rabbi Mati Nubagur Shlita. For me, it's a tremendous privilege to learn from Rabbi Feiner, to watch Rabbi Feiner, something which we will forever cherish. Rabbi Pelkowitz used to say that when you see a building, you always overlook the most important part. That is the yesod, the foundation. And therefore, this evening, I think we owe a debt of gratitude to those Torah Jews who were dedicated and committed themselves to establish a Kehila Kedosha in Far Rockaway 100 years ago. I think the founders of the shul would be very proud and happy to see that after 100 years, the shul is still an active and vibrant part of the community. It is a main Torah center. It is a main center of Tzedaka. And the shul is busy 365 days a year. If you think back 100 years ago, I'm sure it was less than clear that there would be a Shomer Shabbos community in Far Rockaway 100 years from now. But here we are 100 years later. It's still the largest shul in the neighborhood. Even as other shuls proliferate, the center is still the white shul. If not for the shul, the yeshivas wouldn't be where they are now. The air of various functions of the vad, and we cannot forget the balabatim, whose shoulders we stand on. The Cy Hammers and the Louis Newmans, and of course the Morty Stones, people who were foundational, people who gave it not only the financial resources, but gave it their time, their love. All well, the presidents over the years that took on that responsibility because the was important to him. All the people who worked in the office, the different youth directors. They are 100% the reason why the White Shoulders is what it is today. It's our responsibility to appreciate it, and it's our responsibility to them to pass those values on to the next generation for another 100 years. The Rabbanu preceded Rabbi Palkovitz and Rabbi Palkovitz, Rabbi Flaum, who took over at the helm for over a decade. Unbelievable, Karsatov. But now together, Rabbi Nubigar and myself, we want to take it to the next 100. And together, we're going to grow as a mishpacha. We are your family and always will be.